The next day, taking with us just enough food for three days, and our bedding, leaving our tent behind, we hiked around the southern slopes of Wedge, keeping just above the timber line to avoid the bush. To obtain water, we had to drop down about 800 feet into the valley, where we found a delightful camping spot. We lulled ourselves to sleep under the stars that night, with soothing strains from the camp orchestra. The first part of our climb the next day brought us over four high ridges to an elevation of about 7,000 feet. From there we had a good view of Mount James Turner, as Neil had named it in memory of the Vancouver Reverend. Once across the Quarry Glacier, we had to cross the Turner Glacier, much larger than the former. We were now at the foot of the cliffs at the base of the peak. With some trouble, owing to the extreme looseness of the rocks, we climbed the cliffs to the east of the peak. From here we were ready for the final climb. The peak itself is a mass of jagged rock most of which is very loose and dangerous, and I doubt whether it could be climbed from any other direction. An hour's rock climbing took us to the summit, arriving at 1.30 p.m. Once again, we had a magnificent view. On three sides, the cliffs were very precipitous, while even the face up which we had come looked very steep from above. Still, we descended and reached camp again at about 6 p.m. The next day, we packed back to our first camp, and the day following down to Alta Lake the latter journey taking six hours. At Rainbow Lodge, we had an excellent supper, which partially made up for a week of dried goods. Afterwards, we collected the other half of our grub, preparatory to making an early start the next day up Fitzsimmons Creek. <laughs>